In issue two of Simply Lettering, we're doing lots of resist techniques. So this is my masterclass for this issue. And for this project, I'm going to show you how to create the faux resist look. It's really, really simple. And for this one, I'm actually going to show you how to do different lettering to what's on this canvas in the magazine. So for this project, I'm working on a canvas. Now you can get canvases in lots of different sizes, even different shapes nowadays. I'm going to show you on a small one because otherwise a large one might take us quite a while. I'm going to be bringing in some Karen markers. These are one of my go-to lettering pens. I adore them because they're extremely juicy and the nib on them is fantastic. Now you can get these from Ken Bromley and you'll find details of that inside the magazine. You can see there we've got a brush nib that's very flexible but for this I'm actually using the ink in the barrel to create the background so we're not worrying too much about the brush nib here and it's very easy to create this background we're going to do some scribbling so we can really have lots of fun so do all of this before we apply any color once you start adding water to the canvas we're going to start diluting the ink and you don't want the water to be soaked up by the pen nib here so I'm concentrating on a strip through the middle here. So just scattering some different colours through the centre. I'm going to go in with the blue as well. Now these are the colours that I've used in the project in the magazine. But you can of course use different colours. I'm sure reds and oranges would look amazing with some yellow or um, some greens. Um, maybe green and blue actually would look fantastic. But don't be afraid to mix your colours. Just bear in mind your colour wheel and bear in mind what colours, say for example your primary colours, will turn to brown because we don't really want to have muddy colours where they meet. So try to stick with some maybe that are quite close on the colour wheel. So I'm just going to fill in that gap. So you can see here I have just there, just scribbled. That's all I've done there. So now I'm going to bring in some water. I've got quite a large brush and it's loaded with water and I really am going to dab some water on each of these patches of ink before they get too dry because it will dry eventually on the canvas. So we want to reinvigorate all of that ink just by dabbing. You can see there, we can see they're starting to mix together. It looks beautiful. So then you can go in and really start to mix them. Don't worry if you've got too much water on here at the moment we're just trying to mix that and we can lift off some of this water in a second I'll show you how to do that and this goes the same with any watercolor technique just take some kitchen towel and we're just going to dip it not touching the canvas just dip it into the water and you can see it's soaking up that excess there and what's going to be left behind is a beautiful watercolor technique in the background there. so lift it up until you're happy with what's left there so you can see that already is a little bit wet still we've got a nice watercolor technique now I'm going to dry this with a heat gun alternatively if you don't have one you can actually use uh, air dry so just pop it in the Sun or pop it out somewhere nice and warm and give it about probably half an hour to dry air dry it doesn't take too long because the canvas is slightly porous and we are really only using water so I'll pop this on and we'll come back once that's dry so now we've dried this all off you can see we've got the beautiful color blends there they're absolutely stunning and something that you'd actually struggle much harder to get if you were using paint and trying to mix it without the water to get this watercolor technique so what i'm going to do now is go over with my white this will make it look as if you're bringing the canvas white back through that ink and give you that resist technique the product that I definitely recommend for this is Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Now, exactly as it says on the jar, it's bleed proof. So it's a really nice thick white paint. You can apply with a brush or a dip pen, for example, and it won't bleed anywhere. So I never shake this. What I do just with paint, I always take the lid off and I give it a stir if need be. I've already done that. And now I've got a very fine paintbrush here. So I'm just going to dip that in. You can see I've got some paint on here. Now it is a really small paintbrush because you'll be surprised at how wide your strokes can get with a brush. So I want to start with a thin one, so I'm taking any excess off the paint. And you can go over this a few times if you need to. I'm going to use 
do the word create. So my thick strokes with the brush are going to be pressing down thick. And you can see there I've got a rough outline and then I can go in with my paint and I can just neaten any edges up. Because it is a canvas, it is a rough texture, you may need to go over a few times. Your brush isn't going to get into all the little nooks and crannies as you go the first time. It's just one of those things. But if you do this in pencil first, which I highly recommend, then you're going to be able to get your spacing perfect and just follow those lines. There. So there I finished my words. Now I would let that dry once and then if I need to, I would just go over any areas that I haven't quite covered because of the texture of the canvas. But I really like that rough look. I don't want it too perfect. I want it to look as if the watercolour has been resisted by something that's underneath. So we can hang that, you could do maybe a set of three with Create, Dream, Inspire on. That would be really beautiful. So use the same technique to do the project in the magazine that we've got here that is our take time to make your soul happy.